Welcome to the open air museum in Mount Cappadocia. Um, yeah, close to good. Nenari, people who chose to live a lonely life of seclusion such as hermits form an important social group despite the fact that they are, had nothing to do with the churches and monasteries. These people did not even work to meet their basic needs. They received the basic necessities from the population and monastery who respected them. Daily worship in these small monasteries was taking place under the supervision of a member of the clergy. Christians who lived in these structures, the situation was unlike that of the groups in Egypt and Syria, who enjoyed a more privileged life. Everything was shared, a secret unit too, and there were no differences that would cause rupture with the common people. The seven story world gone, outcropping the left the museum entrance, son of the nunnery. This is easy. Right now we are at the entrance. This is the entrance. Okay. This is the nunnery. This way. Yes. And then first stop it will be the Saint Basil Church over there. And then you are going to follow this road, this okay. is, which is going up. Okay. And then you are going to visit Santa Barbara Church, Apple yeah. Church, Snake Church, living area, dining room, kitchens, and the, the other churches. You will make a circle, and then you will come. Back. Amazing. Okay. Thank you very much yeah, for your time. If you want to know more information, more details, we recommend it with the live guides. Okay. This audio guide gives you very simple information. Yeah, so how much is the live guide? 200 lira. 200 lira. Yes. Okay. Roughly 25 dollars, 20 euros. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Very welcome. At the end of the second century, a large Christian community in form of Padukia is known as their way of life. What is your photo? No? <laughs> Maybe pretty slow uh, for you guys. But, I don't know. Does she want to do that or what? Okay. Do you want to go together? Yeah. Okay. 
let's go to this corner first let me give you some information historical and geological information and then we can start with all this this is too big i think it's better yes. to have some money yeah. if you want you can see oh, no problem okay Welcome to the Garena, Garena Open Air Museum. My name is Jem, C-E-M, we is Jem. Oh, okay. Uh, first, we start with the geological history of Cappadocia. While we are in here, you will see very interesting shapes. Yeah. All those shapes are natural shapes. Just the inside, the caves built by the humans. Mm -hmm. If we look at the geological history of Cappadocia, it starts in 10 million years ago. Wow. There was a tree volcano in here. Mm -hmm. The biggest one is RGS on Kayseri direction, roughly 4,000 meter high. And the other two volcanoes on Aksaray direction, Hassan and the Menendez one. So this three volcano, 10 million years ago, they were active volcano. When they were active volcano, they had been carved all this area with the volcanic ash and lava stones. From one volcano, two materials come out. 85% volcanic ash, 15% lava mm -hmm. stone. So, Cappadocia, it's meaning 85% volcanic ash and 15% lava stone. So it's very soft. Right? Yes. One part is soft, the other part is volcanic lava stones are harder. Yes, harder. And important part, the thickness of this volcanic ash, 200 meters. That's meaning this three volcano, they were active volcano, 2 million years. Wow. After two million years, when they're not active anymore, by the naturally start to give us some shape because of this volcanic ashes is very soft material. When there is rain and snow, this soft material melts, goes down. But lava stones, they stay Same. there. If we look at there, <coughs> we can understand. You see the black lines, all these black lines? These are the lava stones. White color, light color is the volcanic ash. So by the time this volcanic ash is soft part, is down. Only lava stones they remind there. We need 20,000 years more for to see this shape. So here just started a few thousand years ago, roughly 5,000 years ago. But if you look at this part, we will see only black colors. So that's meaning once this place it was full of volcanic ashes, rainwater, snow water, it had been took away all this soft part. And only the lava stones they stay in here. Thank you, thank you very much. Yes. And the people who were living in here, this, they saw this is their soft material. And they built all their houses, churches and the monastery inside of the caves. Because of there are two main reasons. First reason, hiding from the enemies. And yes. second reason, hiding from the temperature. Mm. Right now we are in 1200 meter high from the sea level. That's meaning winter is very cold, minus 15, 20, and snow, and yeah. summer is very hot. So, uh, if they have this kind of cave rooms, these cave rooms, it has got fixed temperature, winter and summer always 14 degrees. Mm -hmm. Wow, amazing. And if you look at the civilization history of uh, Cappadocia, we will see as the oldest civilization, Hittites, they were living in here, before Christ 3000. After Hittites, we will see the Assyrian colonies, they are coming from Mesopotamia, Mesopotamian civilizations. After then that, we will see the Phoenic or Phoenic civilization, they are coming middle of Europe. And after then that, we will see the Roman Empire and the Byzantine Empire. Actually, what you will see in Cappadocia, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. cities, castles, villages, churches, monasteries, all of them, it's coming from the Roman and the Byzantine period period. Then we look at that period, that period is the war period of Cappadocia. Mm -hmm. The Roman Empire, they were making trade, they buy the spice from India and silk from China, and they use the silk road for to take to the Europe. And Cappadocia is the 
key of Silk Road. For this reason, everyone, they want to get this piece of land. For this reason, they had so many warriors here. And for this reason, if you look at the Cappadocian villages, all those villages built it as a hiding place or as a defending place. Yeah. Like Gareme, inside of the valley. Mm -hmm. You cannot the see there is a one village there. Uh -huh. And the second uh, place, like Uchisal Castle, they find the one big mountain. Yeah. Top of the mountain, they make a castle. At the bottom, they make their houses. From their houses, they have tunnels. This tunnels goes directly to the castles. Oh. When there is a war, they can use these tunnels. They can hide from the enemies. And these castles are not military base. Those are all, you know, hiding place of the village people. So it's kind of like a shelter. Yes. Okay. And the third system is underground cities. Yes. If you go to underground city, we you went, will see. Yeah, we went, uh, two days ago. Uh -huh. You will see it's a flat area. There is no mountain, there is no valley. Right. So these people, they need to hide from enemies. So in this case, they built the underground cities, hiding from the enemies. They had so many wars in here. Mainly Roman Empire, they were winning all the wars. But before Christ 200, they had one big war against the Persians. And in this time, Roman Empire, they lose this war. Persians, they came until here. They took to the Cappadocia, they built a kingdom here. And they did call this kingdom, Cappadocia Kingdom. Oh. And then first time we see the Cappadocia name there. And so the there was no name. Yes. Yeah. And the meaning of the Cappadocia, country of beautiful horses. Yeah, so but Cappadocia it's a, it's a it's Persian name? Yes, Persian names. And they did call country of beautiful horses because of here in that period, here it was the horse farmery of the Roman Empire. When the Persians they come in here, they saw all these horse farms and then many horses and they did call country of beautiful horses this place they were in here only 50 years but this 50 years 50 it was years. enough to give a name of this area after oh. that they did call Cappadocia this place and in that period Roman Empire as a religion they were pagans their king half king and half god with this system they were controlling to the people mm -hmm. Jesus in Jerusalem he bring a new religion Christianity and they don't accept this religion, Roman Empire, because of they're going to lose all their power. Right. And they did the crucifixion of the Jesus in Jerusalem, and then they start to kill other Christians there. The saints who live in Jerusalem, they're afraid to live there. Mm -hmm. Some of them, they went to Egypt. Some of them, they came to the here. And then they start to teach this religion. Cappadocian people, they accept this religion very quick. But this place also controlled by the Roman Empire, and they don't accept this religion. Mm -hmm. And, but these people, they have so many places hiding from the Roman soldiers, yeah. castles, uh -huh. underground cities, and the valleys. And they did it over then 300 years. 350, when the Constantine, he became a king of the Byzantine Empire, he accepted this religion and he gave the freedoms to, to the Christian community. Yeah. And then they start to build many churches and the monasteries here. There are so many churches and the monasteries. The reason, there is a one important person, San Basil. Mm -hmm. San Basil is the one of the most important teacher of Christian religion. Wow. Christianity based on San Basil. San Basil yeah. Do you know Basilica? Basilica oh, okay, name. that's where it's from. Basilica names come from the San Basil. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yes. And he, he traveled a lot. When he come back, he saw that these Christians, they didn't have the rule of the religion. Or to put to the rule of the religions, he opened to the first monastery here. And this is the one of the oldest and the biggest monastery of Cappadocia, Göreme Monastery. Uh -huh. Monastery is meaning school, yeah. where the teachers and the students live. You can imagine as a campus, university and the campus. So here we will see a dormitory for girls, girls' dormitory. Mm -hmm. And at the back there is a one more dormitory, this is for boys. Okay. So this place they start to use from after Christ 400 until 1920, roughly 100 years ago. Wow. After the First World War, Turkey and Greece, they did the one population exchange. Mm -hmm. The Christian community who were living in here, they went to the Greece from Greece Turkish community, they came to the here. After 1930, no more Christian. It was the banded area. 1960, here it became a museum. 1985, it became a World Heritage UNESCO. Mm -hmm. It became UNESCO area because of the churches yeah, and, the the and the paintings, yes. Now we will go to see all these churches. Okay. Inside of the churches, it's forbidden to take a picture okay. and giving yes. information. Mm -hmm. So I have all the pictures of the churches. I will explain you one by one. 
And then if you have any question, you can ask me. The first church, what we are going to see, Sambazin church. Mm. This is the entrance part. You will see the tombs. This is the main part. You will see the tree of this design. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. And when you enter inside of the church, why <laughs> there's no picture inside? Do you know? Huh? Do you there's know a painting, why? painting. 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 So painting. 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 Painting.